Hi, I'm Jim Rickards. I'm the author of a new book. It's called Money GPT, AI and the Threat to the Global Economy. In the book, we look at a lot of the flaws as applied to capital markets, banks, and national security. So chapter one, we call the end of markets. It's a scenario. Now, the book's nonfiction, but we give a, uh, a scenario of how markets could not just crash, but actually be closed. The problem is that these AI al algorithms all think alike, put the word think in quotation marks. Uh, they have the same models, the same logic, the same code, et cetera, which means they're all going to act alike. And in a financial panic, the basic idea is, you know, get out, sell everything, go to cash, go to the sidelines, wait out the storm. That can actually be a good strategy for an individual. But the problem is if everyone does it at once, where are the buyers? If everything's automated and the automation is all the same, the market will go straight down. So we talk about that. One of the solutions to this is uh, cybernetics. Cybernetics is from a Greek word for the helmsman, someone to steer you through problems. And it's sort of you know, a simple way to put it is if you're on ice, don't slam on the brakes. You're going to skid out of control. Just kind of tap the brakes. There are things you can do to prevent some of these problems. In chapter two, we take the same thing that I just discussed and we apply it to the banking system. But the banking system is even more of a threat because banks are the the ones who actually create the money. So in Wall Street, if it goes down, investors lose money. But if the banking system goes down, the whole economy shuts down. Uh, and you could have the same problem we've been talking about with all of the algorithms thinking the same way applied to the banking system. And it could get out of control. If you're an investor in banks, your stock could go to zero in that, uh, in that situation. Chapter three is called moneyness. We also look at the concept of money. Everyone thinks they know what money is. I've got money in the bank. I've got money in my wallet. Do you? Basically, all money is debt. What you think of as money is somebody else's debt. The whole system is based on tr trust and debt. Uh, there's lots of other kinds of money, cryptocurrencies, special drawing rights, the BRICS currency, modern monetary theory. They all promise new forms of money. The question is, can the computers keep up? Can artificial intelligence and GPT keep up? We're actually in a post-linear acoustic oral Homeric pre-Platonic world. We're going back to where we were 2,500 years ago when there was no writing or very little, what if money becomes a sound? There's a bigger issue here in terms of communications theory and how we actually get messages across. But when money is a kind of a, you know, drumbeat coming out of the jungle uh, as a sound, you know, Marshall McLuhan referred to the global village. He also reminded people that villages are not always warm, friendly places. But if that's the way the world is going, then it's hard to see how AI and GPT can even keep up. Chapter four is called national insecurity. So we pivot from capital markets and banking into national security, which is one of my areas of expertise. And we ask a very fundamental question. Should artificial intelligence have a place in the nuclear war fighting kill chain? Nobody wakes up and says, hey, nice day. I think I'll start a nuclear war. It happens because one side raises the ante, then somebody else responds and then respond, et cetera. And the escalation keeps getting higher and higher. The lesson of the Cuban Missile Crisis is this, if you're on that escalatory ladder, back down, take a beat, go down, de-escalate, talk, but somehow solve the problem. But AI doesn't do that. AI has no empathy, no common sense, no gut instinct to avoid annihilation. AI would actually imitate the worst aspects of humans, which would lead us possibly to complete nuclear annihilation. And finally, in chapter five, we have what I call future failure. That's the title of the chapter. And basically, we look at all the ways that AI and GPT are failing us already, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, the first point is uh, censorship and output. It's better just to have honest output. How do you deal with bias or repugnant bias? Education, uh, expertise, uh, being trained to spot the, uh, the bias, et cetera. That's how you deal with it. You don't lie to yourself or you don't let others lie to you. Uh, you get honest output for good or bad and then use education and common sense to deal with it. And just to wrap it all up at the end, we talk about the future of artificial intelligence. It's in particular something called superintelligence. Superintelligence is when the computers actually run past humans. So the fact is computers are good at deductive logic and inductive logic, but they're not good at all. In fact, no one's been able to program what's called abductive logic. It just means common sense. A common sense, intuition, gut instinct, the way we make decisions every day. Computers actually can't do that. Maybe it'll actually be the case that we're looking at, at the limits of AI right now and that humans with their instinct, with their gut instinct, with their common sense will prevail in the end. As I say, it's not a doom and gloom book, but it takes a very hard look at some of the difficulties ahead and hope that you can prepare for them. Uh, and that's part of the message to the book. What we want to do really is not so much dwell on the bad side of it, but point out the dangers. Uh, let people know what's out there and what they should be looking for and how it could affect you 
whether it's in the stock market, in the banking system, your savings, or just in everyday life. We hope you enjoy the book. We think it could not be more timely. Um, it'll be good for uh, investors, savers, and everyday readers in dealing with the world of AI. Thank you.